play on What's Your Hobby? Create an entire village in your home or backyard. This is the perfect way to start. We'll take you through all the steps, from laying down track, choosing your trains, even constructing miniature buildings and landscaping. We find it very relaxing at the end of the day to actually come out in the garden and work in the garden. We're at the Mecca of model railroading, the world's largest train store. Home, no, make that roundhouse to kids of all ages. Allied Model Trains in Culver City, California. Did I mention kids of all sizes? Even big ones like me? Allied's mind-boggling selection of model trains, layouts, and accessories is the result of the lifelong passion of one man. He loved trains as a kid and became an avid hobbyist and collector as an adult. Perhaps what happened next to Alan Drucker was inevitable. In 1975, uh, I was working for a large electronics firm. I, I got tired of the corporate rat race. Uh, this little 1,200-square-foot store was... Uh, uh, it came on the market, and I sold my house, my car, signed my life away, and all of a sudden I was the man behind the counter. <laughs> Why do trains fascinate people? Uh, I, you know, I, I, there's several things about the hobby. One of the wonderful things, and, and, and one of the things that really keeps it going, is that it's a never-ending pursuit. And it's a different people, it's a pursuit of different things. There's the collectors, they, they want to have, uh, you know, every model number that a particular manufacturer made. Other people, they want to build the ultimate layout, the ultimate display. are the uh, four most popular gauges of model railroads today. There are more, but these are the most popular. This is G-gauge. Um, this is uh, pretty much the largest that's available today for your typical electric train. Uh, it's very suitable for outdoor garden railways. Uh, it's great to run around the Christmas tree. Uh, it can be a little bit pricey, but uh, the operating characteristics are wonderful. The next size that we have is O or O27. Uh, this is the size that Lionel's made popular uh, since the early 1900s. They still manufacture it today. Uh, runs on three rail track, and uh, this was the most popular uh, gauge in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Then we've got HO, uh, HO standing for half of O. If you'll notice, uh, it's pretty much half the size of the O gauge train. This today is the most popular scale. It has been for the last 20 or 30 years, probably will be. Uh, in the future. There's thousands of manufacturers making literally millions of different items for this gauge. Um, then we've got N, uh, N being the next size down from HO. Uh, N scale is gaining in popularity. Now this will get me on the right track, huh? Right. When somebody wants to start out in model railroading, usually HO scale, this is the perfect way to start. The first thing we've got is we've got a, a diesel locomotive here. It's a very high quality locomotive. It happens to be made by uh, an American company by the name of Athern. Uh, it, it, it's not often that one of the very best things can also be one of the least expensive, but with Athern, that's the way it is. So we've got a good diesel locomotive here with all the wheels powered. We've got a string of freight cars. Here's a nice box car. We've got a hopper car a refrigerator car, and naturally a Santa Fe caboose to match. Uh, even though these are kits, you can see they're fully painted and decorated, and they go together in about 10 minutes. There's really no gluing or anything like that involved. Uh, the next thing we need is good track. This is uh, Atlas nickel silver track. That's what I'm saying is the rails are nickel silver. A lot of your inexpensive train sets come with brass rail track, which is really old fashioned. It really doesn't work as well. So we've got a nice oval of track here. And then we've got a power pack here by MRC. Uh, again, American made. Uh, it's got an on and off switch, so you don't have to unplug it each time. It's got your throttle here. Um, I added everything up here, and to start out in this setup, it comes to $108.23. With this as a starter, 
Everything here is high quality. Nothing here will become obsolete, and they can just build on this to build the biggest display that they had in mind. I could begin my empire right here, right? Well, you know, every huge empire starts with the first piece of track. piece of track to an entire empire, the fun is just beginning, and the choice of layout and design is all yours. Now, once you got your basic layout, you start adding on things to customize. For instance, I need a searchlight tower, and maybe, oh, look at this, a spotless dry cleaners, in by nine, out by five, and uh, over here, oh, 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 sneeds, feeds, and tools, I like that, and maybe, oh, I've always wanted my own swimming pool. Anyway, the point is, you can go to your heart's content. Now, when we come back, we're going to meet a family that's so crazy for this, they combine two hobbies, model railroading and gardening. Wait till you see their backyard. Oh, I've got to have one of these, a mini mall. Yes! And later, we'll take you through the process of creating miniature buildings for your model railroad. This is HGTV Canada. This program is brought to you by Whiskas. Make a friend for life. Okay, so the idea of model railroading appeals to you, but you're the kind of person who likes the great outdoors, kind of working in the garden. No problem. We can combine the two. Take a look at this. It's a hobby that has so many different facets to it. Uh, we, it we like trains. We like gardening. We like the construction. We like um, electrical uh, work on it. Um, we build models of various things and we uh, change things around. We buy them from the manufacturer and we change them to make them to suit, so they suit us. It's sort of creating little things. You get ideas that um, makes you think, oh, I, I need to put something in this area to bring the whole thing together, not just the train and the track, but the background, the right trees or a little person or a little building. It's like a little miniature tableaus to me going around and finding the right plants to enhance not only the buildings but to keep the scale right and the look right. It, it's a lot of fun. Frank and Pat Curtis wanted a hobby they could work on together and that would challenge their creativity. Their garden railway provides them with all that and more. It's peaceful. It's also very, it's hard work keeping it, it the, doing the gardening and keeping it up to date, but we find it very relaxing at the end of the day to actually come out in the garden and work in the garden and, as Frank said, we're always changing things. We That's get right. new ideas. Well, one of the things we've always said and told people is that the construction is the most interesting part. And in fact, people t uh, say they're, uh, they're amazed when we say we're going to start tearing something apart to rebuild it. And they say, you're not going to tear this apart, surely. And they say, yes, we are, because we enjoy doing it. <laughs> this is one hobby where you can do anything, and nobody says you're wrong, because it's your little world. <laughs> it's true. Your this is our little kingdom, little we call kingdom it. kingdom of your own. <laughs> the thing about Garden Rowie is a European scene, and especially a British village in the countryside. Yes, I immediately visualized uh, miniature roses and a gr lush green landscape with a little village in the distance. A and castle. A, a castle and a color, some color there. One nice aspect of her hobby is that it's enabled Pat to teach her husband quite a bit about gardening, while she benefits from Frank's insights into railway mechanics. Now they're both equally at home planting flowers or laying down track. It's a very sharing hobby. We, uh, we don't divide the, the tasks up in, into his and hers. It's uh, we... To me, it's bringing so many aspects into it. I mean, I love gardening. I love making the little buildings, creating the scenes. It's just bringing so many elements together.
We were first hooked into this hobby when we saw another garden railway up in this area. We, we just thought it was a thing of beauty. I just immediately could visualize this train track and this train winding around my plants. I mean, it wasn't the love of the train at that time so much as my garden would look prettier, enhanced with this train going around. Some people would see it only as a, a railway out, outside. Uh, we see it as a, a garden with a railway in, rather than a railway with a, <laughs> a garden around it. If a person wants to get, uh, to get into this hobby, and garden railways, I think that their best way is to join a garden railway club. And to find out if your area has a garden railway club, you can buy one of the national magazines. There, uh, there's Outdoor Railroader and Garden Railways. There's two magazines, and you should find them on your newsstand. In the back of both those magazines, they had a list of garden railway clubs. Like many enthusiastic hobbyists, the Curtises put a lot of time and energy into their work. They say what they get in return makes it all worthwhile. Someone said to me, um, I'd love to live in it. I'd like to come home from work and get off the train at this station and walk up this street and live in the village you've created. And <laughs> we were quite flattered that's with that. That's right, you do talked. get flattered with that, that's yeah. right. We just did it from the heart. And to me, a lot of crafts and hobbies you just do from within. You just make it to please yourself and it ends up giving a pleasure to a lot of other people. When we come back, Pat Curtis shows us how to build our own miniature village, brick by brick. This is HGTV Canada. Laying down the track and landscaping a garden railway is only a small part of the hobby. Creating the miniature buildings that make up this tiny world is an art form all its own. And Pat Curtis is a true artist. One of my favorite buildings is Rose Cottage. On Rose Cottage, the thatched roof, um, I made from a broom. And, uh, I had a lot of glue and broom all over my fingers. And of course, I love my miniature roses that grow around it. But it's just a memory of um, back home, and it's fun to have created that and it to look exactly as our memories are. A recent addition is our Welsh castle. We've been promising that for a long time. and. Uh, Although it's new, we've made it look like it's 400 years old, I hope. We built our Welsh castle out of these stone blocks that we molded. But we used this silicone rubber mold here to pour into. First of all, we lightly spray it with water so that we can release it easily. And then we just used a product called Rapid Set. And it's a very simple recipe, one cup of Rapid Set, one quarter cup of water, Stir it in. This will set up in about 20 minutes. And then it on melt on melts very easily. And then we just glue these together, join them together, and we glue them with this glue that is waterproof and it's clear. So it sets up nice and clear and we glue our little walls and then I just paint them and put them out in the garden and I'm sure they'll last forever. The church is, is nice um, in that we changed the scene there. We currently have a wedding scene there because we have a wedding in the family. Christmas time we have carols and carolers and it's nice to change the scenes on that. For our church now in the village, instead of expensive stained glass, which some would have, I thought just take a fairly stiff piece of plastic and our glass paint, transparent glass paint, and I'll just create a little stained glass here by spritzing little different colors of this clear paint. And I just let it run into each other. I wasn't doing a proper design of any kind. And I just let them run together. And once the light's behind that and you're 10 feet away looking at that, all you see is the color and the reflection, and it's lovely.
As we've seen, Pat and Frank's garden railway and village are created from memories of Britain and Wales. The Curtis's friends, Joe and Norma Albertson, create their miniatures with a distinctly Americana flavor. Uh, one of the houses is uh, woodworking, so that got me into uh, G-scale garden railroading, building the buildings. It's uh, a lot of work, but it's fun. You come up with new buildings, and that, we get all enthused about making a new one. Most of the buildings are late 1800s through up into the 30s, mostly Western. Now these here are the smaller items that we make up. This chimney is made out of wood, made on the radio arm saw. It's made in long strips and then cut off. This is a uh, adobe chimney, which the hole comes inside and it goes through where the rain don't even. This is an old drill press, uh, butcher shop scales. This is just a bench that would go inside. This is a pine box, the old time uh, gas pump. I helped Joe with the making the shingles, the grooves on the shingles, and then I glue them on the roof. I also do the painting. I have to give um, the buildings a coat of primer, and then I gave it a coat of the finish coat, uh, two coats of it. And then I will uh, do any other little touch-up work that he finds for me to do. I like to make some little outhouses and chicken coops. Joe and Norma explain it, making miniatures uses the same skills and the same tools as woodworking on normal size objects. There's just less room for error. This is uh, about a late 1800 passenger depot. It's uh, cut out 3 8 plywood, and the uh, windows and doors are cut out from, uh, using this type of saw. You drill, just drill two holes here and mark your square, and you would go around. And the uh, the way it would look be, uh, be into the spot. This would be the side where the go under here. This would be the spot that was here. This would be the back, and this would be the other side. And then there's a long piece that goes along here for the overhang. And uh, it's all put together with either brad nails or can be glued together. If you have a brand new gun like I have, well then it makes it much simpler. We never stop. Work 10 to 12 hours a day. <laughs> keep, keep this young, or gets us old faster. <laughs> We'll be right back with more. If we've stimulated your interest in model railroading or rekindled an old passion, ah, oh, my misspent youth, <laughs> your local bookstores and hobby stores and libraries have some books you really should check out, and we grabbed a couple. Uh, the uh, HO Model Railroading Handbook. Or maybe garden railways are what you like? Then try the Large Scale Model Railroading Handbook. Trees and buildings may be your thing. Then you'll want to see the scenery for model railroads, dioramas, and miniatures. Well, that's our show for today. Hey, I hope you had a good time. Until next time, I'm Eric Boardman for What's Your Hobby? Oh, and if you're looking for further inspiration, take a look at more great model railroading. And uh, put on your engineer caps, will you?
want to improve your do-it-yourself skills? If so, you'll want to be in the workshop with Rene Canton at a new time, weekdays at 2 Eastern, starting Monday, January 19th, only on HGTV Canada.